হ্যাঁ চেক করছি হ্যাঁ ঠিক আছে ফুল স্ক্রিনটা এখনো হয়নি চলছে চলছে হ্যাঁ ফুল স্ক্রিনটা হয়নি এখন ফুল স্ক্রিন দেখাচ্ছে হ্যাঁ এবার ইউটিউবে এসছে হ্যাঁ
বলুন স্যার হ্যাঁ 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 বলুন আচ্ছা আমি লগ ইন করলাম তাহলে ওই অ্যাকাউন্ট থেকে তুমি কি এই কলেজে আছো না মানে তুমি বিধানচন্দ্র কলেজ এটা আমার খেয়াল ছিল না তোমাকে দেখতে পাচ্ছি না অবশ্যই পরে কথা হবে আবার বাই পরে আর আমি একটু জিজ্ঞাসা করে নিই মোড অফ মানে আমি কি বাংলায় বলবো না ইংলিশে বলবো এখানে অর্গানাইজাররা ভালো বলতে পারবে আমার তো ডিপার্টমেন্ট নয় তবে মনে হয় যে বাইলিঙ্গুয়াল হলে ভালো মানে স্টুডেন্ট এবং বাড়ির পার্টিসিপেন্ট সবার কথা ভেবে বাইলিঙ্গুয়াল হলে মনে হয় তাই তো হ্যাঁ উন্মেষ হ্যাঁ শেষ দুটো ভাষা মিলিয়ে বললেই ভালো হয়
our research scholars, and beloved program coordinators, a joint organizing committee secretary, IPS coordinators, and professional students. It is really a great pleasure and privilege to be present in the international webinar organized by the students and teachers of the Department of Computer Science and Mathematics in collaboration with IPC. Being the head of the institute, I must congratulate the teachers of the both of department, especially Dr. Mohammad Saifuddin, Department of Mathematics, and Professor Unmesh Mandal, Department of Computer Science, Computer Science, as they have taken initiative to organize the international webinar. First of all, I on behalf of Institute must welcome the distinguished research person, Dr. Soma Dotto, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics and Computer Science, University of Warmia and Marjorie in Poland. I would be immensely grateful as she had responded to our invitation despite his busy schedule. I convey my best wishes to our governing body, all members, for moral support to organize the international webinar. I freely and frankly express my pleasure that we have got some highly energetic and enthusiastic members, and they have been trying their level best to arrange various thought provoking seminars on the virtual platform. I do hope that our participants would reap a sound harvest from the day's discussion. I firmly believe that the day's discussion will be interesting and interactive one. The survey of the day's discussion and reciprocal discussion also would further illumine the minds of the teachers and thought. I wish a warm success of the day's webinar. Once again, thanking you all. Namaskar. very much uh, for the introduction. <clears throat> it's my pleasure to get a chance to talk over here. I will switch to my presentation and to share the screen. Um, 
so in the right. I don't see this. Oh, okay, here, yeah, present. Is it visible? Is it visible? Okay, so it is it is not visible or visible. I could not hear it. Okay, it's not visible. How come? Okay. And if I enlarge it, is it visible? Okay, thank you very much. So I will start the presentation. Uh, basically, in this talk, uh, my aim is to present that how, so it's written that it's artificial intelligence, the main broad area. Uh, so my aim is in this talk to present that how different branch of studies such as mathematics, computer science, philosophy, psychology, cognitive science, linguistics, and uh, there are some more which are in some sense contributing together in order to build an artificially intelligent agent. There are different aspects of artificial intelligence, as I mentioned already. I chose three key factors, such as one important factor is how to represent the knowledge. Second is, uh, so it means representation of knowledge means we need some language. We will be talking about some language. Second is how to reason. And how do we learn? So these are the three key factors I will, focus, I will try to focus on in this um, presentation on artificial intelligence. I will start with a quote from a book written by Stuart Russell and Peter Norvig. The first quote is, uh, is about that, um, how do we pass from intelligence to artificial intelligence? So it says, for thousands of years, we have tried to understand how we think, that is how a mere handful of matter can perceive, understand, predict, and manipulate a world far larger and more complicated than itself. The field of artificial intelligence, or AI, goes for dusty. It attempts not just to understand, but also to build intelligent entities. And the second quote uh, ref reflects that how vast the idea is. It says that AI currently encompasses a huge variety of subfields, ranging from the general, such as learning and perception, to the specific, such as playing chess, proving mathematical theorems, driving a car on a crowded street, diagnosing diseases. And AI is relevant to any intellectual task. It is truly a universal field. Saying that, I will try to give some examples here that uh, presently we can consider the achievements of AI, such as uh, some, of, uh, some of us, I hope that are already aware of there's some things like people are working on unmanned vehicles. Obviously, I think uh, this like playing game uh, online, it's like, like many people are aware of this. So this is also an application of AI proving mathematical theorem by other automatic theorem provers. There are recommender systems uh, where, such as we can choose, uh, we can, sorry, we can search for different, based on our purposes, we can search different things. We put, like Google search engine is, itself is a, such an example. We put our choices from a specific field. We put our, uh, some features, what we look for, based on that, it come up with some uh, links or come up with some uh, class, clusters of sites which is relevant to our uh, need. Then there are like online translators which can translate from one language to another language. 
systems which are working as medical diagnostic uh, medical, medical diagnosis systems which work like decision support it can recommend travel plans and moreover a name nowadays is very well known and prevalent it's known as big data data science these are like if you have because often nowadays the problem is to deal with uh, how to abstract out relevant information from big data that comes under big data data science these are also our uh, ai technologies are very much uh, used here so these are some uh, areas where ai is uh, having much application now as i mentioned in the first slide uh, here again I put the disciplines subfields where which we need to learn or those subfields uh, work in those subfields somehow um, have impact in developing ai are like linguistic linguistic where we basically talk about knowledge and presentation languages there are different if we are uh, if our purpose is such that the language is very precise if we want to represent a very precise language to the machine then the language can be like a uh, classical logic language like we have in mathematics if it is more like um, uh, natural language if our knowledge is such which needs to be represented to the machine by some such syntax which needs um, which needs formalization of linguistic uh, predicates or linguistic quantifier or natural language comes in then there are other disciplines such as rough sets fuzzy sets which are quite well known so these are the areas which help in some um, some extent in the development of knowledge representation language then comes in reasoning reasoning aspect in reasoning aspect as i said if it is a very simple case like if it is a very precise reasoning we need for the system then we can think about classical logic such as propositional logic first order predicate logic which is the base logic of mathematical reasoning like the way we de develop uh, proof theorems in mathematics the kind of a reasoning is um uh, lied in the base is known as classical logic so if our system is such that it needs a very precise reasoning then we can base on such system otherwise there are logical systems close to human reasoning as well so as well as inductive reasoning is also important in some times because uh, in often our daily life we do inductive reasoning i will come to this later so re reasoning aspects come in then there are computational aspects where search algorithms game strategies and some more i have not put everything here can come up then there is learning aspect learning aspect is very important because uh, intelligence human intelligence is related to also learning there are learning aspects as well so learning aspects there are different machine learning machine learning is a very important branch of study uh, nowadays i hope people are aware of so there are different machine learning techniques i will discuss some of them if i have time today during the presentation like artificial neural network decision tree learning there are cognitive science approaches because of course we need to think about uh, psychology of reasoning because we are going to prepare a system which will be imitating uh, uh, imitating the behavior of a human so we need to think about psychology of reasoning and then philosophy where uh, how should we define rationality and such concepts may come so you can see that there are really different uh, vast areas which are involved uh, in some extent uh, and some from some different perspective can help in developing ai now here what is ai uh, different definitions proposal prescriptions uh, proposed by different researchers over the time and uh, to um, uh, define that what should be considered as artificial intelligence all these definitions are basically can be categorized in four divisions here i have put them like thinking humanly one is thinking humanly one is acting humanly one is thinking rationally one is acting rationally 
Now, how these things are different? Are the, some such questions come, sir, whether these divisions are really very distinct or they have some overlapping issues. I think that there are some overlapping issues. Depends on what kind of, uh, what our purpose, what we want uh, the intelligent agent to do. Based on that, we incline to one or more than one divisions. So here, I put some uh, different questions that we, which we can think that uh, to categorize these these four divisions. Like if we think about thinking humanly, we can make ask such questions like: Can it recognize different emotions? Can it understand face, body, or phonetic expressions? If we think about acting humanly, then we can think about such questions: Does it have reflex action related to different emotion? Can it react to face, body, phonetic expressions. If we think thinking rationally, here comes, can it analyze and present a problem? Can it make a step-by-step -step derivation of a conclusion? Here I put the word right, because here we sit basically on thinking rationally, here comes up, comes up deriving something from a given information in a step-by-step -step manner, following ideal rules, ideal non-refutable rules means which are uh, like math we do in mathematical reasoning so this comes under thinking rationally if we come to the division acting rationally this is considered to be more general than thinking rationally because uh, we do not in our everyday life when you make decision we do not always follow uh, ideal reasoning irrefutable reasoning what we do in mathematics so acting rationally is more general than thinking rationally that I want to point out here. And what, can, what, what kind of questions we can ask under acting rationally? We can think about can it make decisions based on knowledge of the environment, situation, context, that means based on the available possible actions and desired goal. So this is the point comes under acting rationally that, that is depending on the environment, that means situation or context, depending on what kind of possible actions agent has, and depending on the desired goal, we make some action. That is comes that comes under acting rationally. Or it can be while making decision, can it keep an eye on utility of the reaching to the goal? How that means how time consuming, how costly, how easy the process it is. So these are few questions I put under each category to understand that how we can think about these divisions um, in particular. So now, as I mentioned that, uh, uh, that uh, I should first tell that the term artificial intelligence came as a um, separate discipline. It was coined during the year 1956 in some workshop, two month long workshop in Dartmouth. But as I mentioned before that, different disciplines and their developments already making a round for, for the discipline artificial intelligence. One such work is uh, some paper by a famous mathematician, logician, computer science scientist, Alan Turing. Uh, in his paper, uh, which, which published in 1950, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, he proposed a working definition for intelligence. This is known as Turing test. Let us see that what Turing test mean here. Turing basically defined uh, a test, which is like this, that he said that a machine is intelligent as long as it can pass the following test. And what the test is, suppose, there is a person A sitting in a locked room with two computer terminals. One terminal is connected to a machine the, and the other to a person B. Person A does not know which terminal is connected to the machine and which to person B. Person A can ask questions to both terminals. The task of the person A is to decide which terminal belongs to the machine. And then he mentioned a machine is intelligent if the person A cannot distinguish in a specified time the machine from the person B. One can check that there are nowadays really different kinds of chatterboards available on internet where one can 
uh, chat uh, with some uh, uh, system on the other hand. And, uh, but often it is found that after some specified time, the artificiality of the, um, the uh, other side, uh, our, uh, other side uh, user becomes quite relevant, quite uh, clear. Um, now, I will come to, as it, this is, I already have mentioned that there are different aspects of AI involves like knowledge, inference, inference means reasoning, language, understanding, learning. And as mentioned in the first slide, that the task of AI is first to understand what is intelligent and then make an intelligent agent. That means first to understand different aspects of intelligence. Then we need to formulate them by some mathematical models. Here we may need language. Here we may need inference mechanism. And, uh, and then we build a system or agent which can behave intelligently like humans using some program. Now, here I use the term agent. So let us see what do we mean by agent. Agent is basically is one something such which can perceive its environment through sensors and act upon that environment through actuators. Here I put some examples of different kinds of agents, like if we consider human agent, in case of human agent, sensors are eyes, ears, and other organs for other sensory organs, and actuators are like hands, legs, vocal tract, and so on. If we consider a robotic agent, it has cameras, infrared range finders as sensors, and various motors for actuators. If we consider software agent, like I was giving a lot of soft examples of software agent in, the, uh, uh, in one of the previous slides. If we consider software agents, then for software agents, the sensors are like uh, receiving keystrokes, file contents, and network packets. This comes as sensory inputs. And acts on the environment by displaying on the screen writing files and sending network packets. So this is the other side, like actuators. Now, here, other than sensor and actuator, I also write two more important things, that perceiving the environment, that means we need to perceive, the agent needs to perceive the environment and act upon the environment. These are the only the medias through which they perceive the environment and act upon the environment. So let us think, uh, come to the point of perceiving environment. Agent perception of the environment, we can define by, um, by a term like called percept, which refers to the agent perceptual, perceptual inputs at any given instant. And percept sequence is such, it refers to like the complete history that agent has ever perceived till a point of time. Though it is written here ever perceived, it not necessarily, it's not like such infinite sense one can consider perceived sequence from a time point to a time point. So it can be finite sequence of perceptions. Then next comes agent action. Choice of action of an agent at any given instant depends on the entire perceived sequence observed till that time point. So mathematically, we can think of a function, which we usually call agent function, which like maps, Percept sequence, given a percept sequence, it will map it to our action. We can also write it uh, in a table form where in the left hand side we can write the percept, se percept sequence, and in the right hand side we can assign with the, with, with the decision, say, action. I'd say this table uh, form because this is quite uh, similar to the if some of uh, the audience are aware of rough set theoretic approach, this is uh, quite um, uh, the presentation of table form goes to this rapset kind of in information presentation. Okay, then as I mentioned at the beginning that agent function is not enough because we are going to, agent function is a mathematical entity, mathematical abstraction of the rules, but we need something concrete which can be implemented. So based on the agent function, one needs to write an agent program. 
Now, let us take an example of a simple example of a vacuum cleaner agent. Um, consider a vacuum cleaner agent which has, uh, as environment, it has two locations, square A and square B. A vacuum cleaner agent can perceive two things. One, in which where presently the agent is, and it can perceive if the, if the square has dirt. And it has possible actions available, move left, move right, suck up the dirt, or do nothing. So based on such an, um, uh, such an um, description of a vacuum cleaner agent, one can define a simple uh, agent function like, is written here, if the current square is dirty, then suck, otherwise move to the other square. And then if I want to put it into a visual representation, which is here, so square A, square B, vacuum cleaner agent, suppose it is here, this is one case, just may not be the, um, always here. So I can write down this action function, uh, sorry, agent function, which is written in this last line of the slide, can be written in a table form. On the left-hand side, we have perceived sequence and action right-hand side. So if we consider a starting point, point, then we have a single percept. So as I said that every knowledge we need to represent by some uh, syntax of a language for the time being, I consider a simple syntax, say, if I want to mean A is, uh, square A is clean, we are going to present it like this way, A comma clean within a bracket, within a closed bracket. So A clean, then action is move right, A dirty, then suck, B clean, action is move left, B dirty, then suck. So these are like percept at some, uh, if I consider a single point of time when the um, uh, agent uh, starts its action. If we consider further point of time, then it will come like percept sequence. So the first percept is from earlier point of time, second percept is the Percept from the current point of time. And here the action function is defined in a way that it, it behaves based on the current percept. So here, if we have a clean, a clean as a percept sequence, then um, because this is a clean, the current percept it will move right. If we have a clean, a dirty, it will suck, it will take the action suck, and so on, a clean, b clean, move left. So we can see. Here we can think about more percept sequences as the time goes on. Like I can think about A clean, B clean, A clean, and so on. But one thing here, the way this agent function, a simply uh, a simple agent function is taken, it is such that if I consider A clean, B clean, A clean as next percept sequence, then again it will move right. And then again, if I have A clean, B clean, a clean, B clean, it will move left and so on. So it sees, you can see that the agent function is such that no matter the uh, squares are clean or not, uh, sorry, no matter that the square is clean, the agent is moving between two, two squares, it oscillating between two squares. But usually, if we think of a human agent, we will not do such things. So it's not rational to, uh, to have an agent function like this but I have uh, uh, given here the ex in the example. So here comes on the point of rationality or right things. Now what is after this description, I will come to the point of rational agent. So a rational agent is the one that does the right thing. So whenever we talk about right thing, then uh, something like right action or desirable action comes in, that means there should be some notion of performance measure which will help us to decide which action is right, which action is wrong. So another point to be uh, kept in mind, to be put, uh, to uh, focus on is performance measure. Performance measure is, uh, uh, can be defined from different angles and it should consider the constraints of the state of the environment and possible action that agent can take. So what I said here, the performance measure basically depends on both the state of the environment and action available to the agent. Uh, 
we can consider about some uh, consider some example which can explain this point suppose if we consider that um, there are two different agent one agent say taxi driver two different taxi driver driving in different situation one taxi driver is driving in a um, on a road which is very rough uneven weather is very bad and in the dark night and another context let us consider that another taxi driver is uh, driving uh, driving on a smooth um, well connected road in a daylight so we could not we, could, we cannot uh, set same performance measure for these two situations because there are two different situations of course the situation which i described first has much difficulty so we should have some performance measure based on that based on the uh, based on the state of the environment and based on the actions available to the agent on the other hand in the other case it can be some standard performance measure so this i wanted to emphasize on by this, um, stating this example that performance measure depends on the state of the environment and action available to the agent. So rational agent is basically defined by this way that for each possible percept sequence, a rational agent should select an action that is, that is expected to maximize its performance measure given the evidence provided by the percept sequence and whatever built-in knowledge the agent has. So I will come back to the example once again to explain this notion of performance measure suppose the example of vacuum cleaner agent i have taken before suppose in this agent we add one more uh, uh, component of performance measure and we define some performance measure in this way suppose the vacuum cleaner problem and the performance measure is such that it hours one point for each clean square at each minute over a lifetime of 60 minutes that means over a uh, 60 minutes lifespan, each minute it will check how many squares are cleaned and based on that for each square it will score one point. Now if I consider as the uh, previous example we have considered that the function agent function was such that the vacuum cleaner agent cleans a square if it is dirty and if it is clean then it moves to the, move, moves to the other square. So in such case, given this performance measure, we can see that it doesn't matter if the, uh, whether the square is clean or not, whether the agent is moving unnecessarily, even if the square is clean from one square to another square, it will not lose any point because the performance measure is such, it doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't penalize the agent when it moves unnecessarily. It only checks at each point of time if the how many squares are cleaned and based on that it uh, uh, counted scores so the depending on this performance measure such kind of agent function cannot be and uh, so agent be, um, behaving based on such kind of agent function will not be considered irrational this agent will be considered rational because it is not losing any, anything given this performance measure but Suppose we change the performance measure a little bit, uh, dip, uh, uh, we set the performance measure a little differently. Suppose we consider the performance measure includes a penalty of one point for each movement left or right. If we put such performance measure, then the above agent, which moves unnecessarily even if the square is clean, uh, will be a irrational one. In such case, if we have such performance measure, uh, uh, which will also penalize the agent if it moves, uh, as many times it moves from one square to another, it will penalize a point. In such case, the agent function, a better agent function would be such that we'll do nothing once it is sure that all the squares are clean. So you can see that if we change the performance measure, then the same agent will be behaving uh, counted as irrational and then if we change the agent function then the agent can be considered as rational but so you can see that here performance measure depends on agent actions and 
but there can be some other situation suppose we consider a environment where there is a possibility that a square can be again dirty at some further point of time once it is clean it can be again dirty at some further point of time if we consider such environment then this agent function which i said here that it will do nothing once it, it is sure that all the squares are clean will not be a good agent function so here uh, occasional rechecking of the squares are needed so in that case our agent function should change so this uh, slide i uh, in this slide i present different scenarios to show that both prior as well as current state of the environment and available actions of the agent both are important in designing the performance measure now i will come to the first basic step of uh, artificial intelligent agent it is considered that the first step of uh, designing an artificial intelligent artificially intelligent agent is to describe it, its task environment that means the task of the agent as well as environment of the agent personal agent by some factors four factors uh, performance measure which stands for b environment which stands for e actuators which stands for a and sensors which stands for uh, s all these terms are already discussed in previous slides so here just a visual representation that here we have environment agent can perceive we should there uh, we should specify through which sensor agent can perceive then we should specify percept means the uh, what is the perception of the environment through some language then we should specify the action function that given some um, percept what should be the action of the agent and then to the actuators the specified actuator agent will perform uh, those actions so this is a simple very basic um, uh, architecture of the of an uh, intelligent agent uh, there can be different kinds of environment based on different kinds of situations task and environment both uh, there can be different classification like there can be situations like when the agent uh, can uh, the environment is fully observable to the agent that means agent has all information based on its sensor sensor data about the environment at each point of time such situation is called fully observable if at some point of time agent Uh, does not have all the information ab ab about the environment then it is partially observable and if it can have when that agent doesn't have any information at all at some point of time and such situ situations we call unobservable then uh, there are another kind of um, uh, divisions classification made on based on the uh, situation suppose an agent being at a state uh, uh, it knows what are the possible action it can take and it also knows after taking one action being at a state what will be its next state it also it also knows knows that what next state uh, will be after taking a particular action if such information is available to the agent then such agent is called deterministic agent if uh, it's like a Uh, i do not know that if uh, audience present here are aware of transition relation in automata theory so it's like deterministic transition relation if the situation is such that being at a state agent uh, only know that if it takes a particular action what will be a possible set of states but it doesn't know that exactly which state it can go it only knows a possible set of states where it can go at the next point of time after taking taking a action such a situation is called non deterministic because it has more than one possible states to reach after taking an action and if moreover with this if the agent knows that it has a set of possible states to go after taking an action and it agent also knows that each state in which probability it can it can reach to a state after taking a particular action such a situation is called stochastic then there can be another kind of division based on single agent the whole system can be considering only one agent like in the vacuum cleaner agent there can be multi agent many agents involved 
such as situations also they have different classification competitive cooperative competitive is when one agent tries to maximize its performance measure based on the behavior of the other agent typical example is like games like chess like tic tac toe such games are competitive environment cooperative environment is such when cooperation among agents improves the performance of each of them so this is this multi agent environment then there can be divisions based on uh, another another conditions the suppose that the environment is such that we can divide the environment into some small atomic episodes and each action taken at each episode does not have influence to the next episode so they are independent if such can be the environment uh, of the agent then we call such a kind of a intelligent uh, agent we call episode if it is sequential that means action taken at one episode has influence on the other next uh, take, uh, action taken on the next episode is called sequential and there can be also situation like static versus dynamic when the environment may change if the execution of the actions we call it dynamic and it, it doesn't change we call it static so till this i tried to present different kinds of classification um may i know how much time i have because i am little bit um oh i, I do not know what time exactly we started how much time i have do i have like half an hour so uh, um, uh can you tell me how much time i can take more okay okay so um, now um, another point is another kind of division is made based on the uh, agent program i talked about agent program that agent uh, what we need also a agent program to implement the agent function through some physical uh, uh, system so based on different kinds of agent program we have different kinds of agents like here it is enlisted like sim simple reflex agent model based reflex reflex agent goal based agent utility based agent and it is considered that any kind of intelligent intelligent system we want to build built in can be categorized in one of this uh, one of these categories and it is also possible to convert each of these agents like simple reflex agent like vacuum cleaner agent is an example of a simple simple reflex agent i uh, will i will come to this in a while so uh, all these kind of agents can be converted to a learning agent in the sense that we can also add a learning uh, factor there through which agent can improve its different components like it can improve its um agent function it can improve its it can learn information about uh, uh about the environment so all of this agent basically can be converted to a learning agent by including some learning factors that also i will try to um, uh, cover in, in this lecture so let us quickly pass through the um, uh, different categories like simple reflex agents assert that it can select actions on the basis of the current percept ignoring the rest of the percept history in uh, percept history so that means it doesn't depend on the percept history it depends on the current percept and so that means to design the agent function or the to take the action agent must know the observable fully uh, sorry the environment fully so the environment should be fully observable in this case so uh, like the example of simple reflex agent we have seen it was a example of a simple uh, sorry vacuum cleaner agent was an example of a simple reflex agent then i come to the next one model based reflex agent this kind of agent we can we need in when we have the environment partially observable and in, that means the agent at at some point of time agent doesn't know all the states of the environment in such cases we need to introduce some variable in the agent program we call it internal state and this variable is such that with time 
as much as information agent gathers, it needs to be updated. This internal state needs to be updated with that information. So at the present point, uh, starting point of time, internal state may, may have some empty information about some states of the environment, but with time, it will be it, it should be updated with more information uh, gathered from the environment. But for this, what is required in order to update information of the internal state, it requires two kinds of knowledge. Agent needs to know, first of all, general laws of the environment. Otherwise, it cannot uh, infer new information. So it needs to know general laws of the environment. That means we need to pre present, uh, we need to provide the agent a model of the world, which is given here, model of the world. And along with that, also agent needs to have a reasoning scheme. Without the reasoning scheme, agent cannot derive new information. So here comes in the point of reasoning. So basically, in such kind of agent, apart from the sensors, I mean previous, which I presented here. So here what happens? Through the pers uh, sensor, it perceives the environment, but it has partial information. What the world is like now? All the information about the present state of the environment is not present, so it creates an internal state. And this internal state needs to be updated with the information based on a model of the world which is given to the agent, a reasoning scheme. Now, with the help of this model of the world and present perceive, agent and the reasoning scheme, agent derives new information that what the world may look like after an action. So this information agent needs to derive logically using some deductive reasoning scheme or it can be inductive sometime. Basically, basically here we need some reasoning scheme. And then based on that, it choose action. So here come model-based agent. Quickly, I will pass through goal-based agent. Goal-based agent is sometime, uh, apart from the current state description, agent needs to also know some goal information which helps agent to choose right action. So here, in the um, we, uh, here we also add apart from the other things which we had in the previous case, we also add one goal information. Uh, Goal-based agents. Examples of goal-based goal-based agents are typically searching problem, planning problem, searching problem, searching route from one city to another city, planning problems. Such are examples of goal-based agent. Then the last one is utility-based agent. Utility-based agent is uh, such like it can happen that agent um, agent has more than one way to reach to the goal. Then it comes in that which way will be more feasible or more beneficial. Or it can happen that agent has more than one goal to reach. Then it comes up, question comes up that which goal will be more desirable. So in such situations, we need also a utility function, which provides a way to see that likelihood of the action can be weighed against the importance of the goals or pros and cons of the ways of achieving them. Such agents are more typical for decision-making agents that uh, must handle uncertainty inherent in stochastic or partially observable environment. And then the last factor, this learning agent, Learning agent is, as I said, there should be a learning factor. This is nothing but that any, any agent can be converted to a learning agent by putting four elements. One is performance element, which is nothing but the initially design agent function. Then next, there should be a critic element, like the performance measure, or there can be some other more advanced feedback mechanism based on which it can, it can evaluate that some action taken by an agent, taken by an agent with respect to some parsep sequence is a penalty or reward. If it is a reward, then it can keep that function. If it is a penalty, then there is a, another fact uh, component which called problem generator. What it does, uh, it just explore different action for the same parsep. And then again, check the feedback mechanism. If for the next action it is better, then it modifies the initially designed agent function. And this, this we call learning of the agent. Agent learns more better action in that way. 
So I will take an example in a while of a logical agent, and I hope that will be uh, helpful to understand uh, many of these factors which I was discussing. So logical agent, which is basically an example of a model-based agent. As I said, we need logical component or reasoning component here. So logical agent, uh, also called knowledge-based agent, is an example of a model-based agent. Here we need two parts. One, we need a syntax to present the knowledge of the agent. So we need, need a knowledge representation language. We present the percept and also as well as the information about the world, a general loss of the world. And then we need an inference mechanism. We do it with the help of two functions, say ask function and tell function. So ask function is such because the environment is partially observable in case of such agent. So through ask function, agent asks to the knowledge base. Knowledge base already has some information represented in some syntax of language to the agent. Now through the ask function, before taking any action, through the ask function, agent asks to the knowledge base about some information. If that information about the environment is already available to the knowledge base, knowledge base, the tail function simply can produce that answer. If it is not available, then that then that inference mechanism, that means the reasoning scheme, uh, fed into the system. Using that, the agent can derive information, and uh, sorry, the uh, tail function will derive information and give it to the uh, as an answer to the agent and then agent will take action. So here I will now come to an example. I hope from this point of time uh, it will be more clear because it will be an example. So here I take an example of a typical um, computer game. It's called Wumpus World. In this example it is called Wumpus World. What is this Wumpus World? This uh, description is given here. The Wumpus World is a cave consisting of rooms connected by passageways. Lurking somewhere in the cave is the terrible Wumpus, which is a beast that eats anyone who enters the room, uh, enter its room. The Wumpus can be shot by an agent, but the agent has only one arrow. Some rooms contain pits that will trap anyone who wanders into this, those rooms. The only mitigating feature of this bleak environment is the possibility of finding a heap of gold. Uh, so here you can see that um, this is a this is the Wumpus uh, environment presented by uh, uh, some squares. It's kind kind of a four by four grid. In some of the squares we have pit. In some of the in one square we have Wumpus. In one square we have gold. This is this is just one possible visualization. This uh, localization of peak, Wumpus and gold can be different. I just put one possible model of this problem. Then let us explain this Wumpus world problem with the help of this four factor, performance measure, environment, actuator, sensors. So performance measure is given like this, that it will score plus thousand for climbing out of the cave with the, with the gold. The score will be minus 1,000 for falling into a pit or being eaten by the Wumpus, minus 1 for each action taken, taken, and minus 10 for using the arrow. The game ends either when the agent dies or the agent climbs out of the cave. So this is the performance measure described here. Environment, a 4x4 four four grid of rooms. The agent always starts in the square leveled 1-1 one, one facing to the right. You can see, so agent starts here. We call this square 1-1, one, one. this square we call 2-1, 3-1, 4-1, and this 1-2, one, 1-3, one, 1-4, one, and so on. So the location of the gold, peats, and the gumpus are chosen randomly from the squares other than the start square. That means in the start square, we never put, and uh, in gumpus world, we will have never uh, uh, peat, or gold or Wumpus present in the square one one. Square one one will be always the starting position for the agent. Actuators, agent can move forward, can turn left 90 degree or turn right 90 degree. Agent can grab the gold. So these are the actions agent can take. 
the agent can grab the gold or shoot the arrow in a straight line in the direction the agent is facing. Agent can climb out of the cave only from square one. So this is the only square from where agent can quit the game or climb down. Sensors, the agent can perceive a stench if it is a square adjacent non-diagonally to a square containing Vukus. So see, as Vukus is here, the surrounding cells have a feature of stench. So if agent is here, agent can perceive a stench. That means agent will know that in some of the surrounding square, Vukus must be. Okay. Uh, similarly, the agent can perceive a bead if it is a square adjacent non-diagonally to a square containing pit. Like you can see, it is here we have pit, so in these squares, agent can feel a bead. The agent can perceive a glitter if the square contains gold. So agent can only perceive glitter in the in this in the square where gold is, not the surrounding square. So these are the sensors, and these are the actuators environment performance measure. Now, based on that, first task is to represent the knowledge base. That means we need some language. So first, let us see that at the starting point of time, and let us also concentrate on the fact that when agent starts from here, agent doesn't know anything about the other spheres. So this is partially observable. Only agent know at the point of start, agent only know that it is in the first square. So what does the information agent has at the beginning when it starts? Agent knows that it agent is at square one one. And agent also as it is in the square one one, it can perceive everything from that uh, uh, in that square. So agent uh, knows that square one one does not contain either a peat or a vumpus. And agent does not have does not perceive either a beat, stench or glitter. So based on the general law of the game and agent being at 1-1, one, one, it can perceive that there is no pitch, there is no stench and no glitter. So such, such information is present to the agent at the beginning. What are the other information agent has? Of course, the general laws of the game, that means model of the world, is present to the world, uh, present to the agent. Is uh, so agent knows, agent can see, um, Okay, yes, agent knows that it can feel bridge in the squares adjacent to a square containing feet. Agent can feel stench in the squares adjacent to a square containing rules. Agent can perceive a glitter in the square containing gold. So these are the general laws of the world, of this Vulpus world. So now comes up how to present this uh, linguistically written knowledges in a, some specific syntax. So usually we can consider, or because this is, you can see that here all the sentences are like declarative sentences. That means either true or false. So for such cases, we can use propositional logic language. So here, because I do not have much time to go into the detail of propositional logic, so I will just try to say as much as required for the presentation. So let us consider that we introduce Propositional variables, which are like propositional variables, each propositional variables represent a proposition or a declarative sentence. So suppose if we want to say something like agent is at square xy, we will denote like this way by a propositional variable axy. If we want to say there is a p at xy, pxy will be the propositional variable for that. Vulkus is at xy, wxy will be the propositional variable for that. Agent parsip bridge at xy, bxy for that, agent perceive strange at xy, sxy for that, agent perceive glitter at xy, gxy at, for that. So introducing such variables, uh, we can now represent agent knowledge, knowledge, base, knowledge base, which is written here at the starting point, say time t0. Agent at square one one, agent knows this information that if square b1, uh, if sorry, if uh, agent perceive bridge at square 1, 1, then that is equivalent to say that one of the square 1, 2 or square 2, 1 contain, contains speed. See the example, if it is agent here and agent, if agent perceive 
beach here, then agent must know that one of the square these or this must have feet. So this is the general information which we can we should write for each square. Each square we should write this information. This this one agent can fill bridge if the square adjacent to a square contains b. So this is the information because this is propositional logic uh, language. So we do not have quantifier. We need to write down such sentences for each square. Like for square two one again, if agent agent fills uh, perceives bridge at square two one, if and only if either square or square one one or square two two or square three one contain p. So you see that if agent fills bridge here, then either this square or the presented by this way. So as I said, we need to the agent must have written this in its knowledge base for all the squares. Similarly for stench, it says that if at square one one agent perceives stench, that uh, means that either square, square one two or square two one, there must be rules. So these are the general laws presented. Apart from that, agent knows that square one one doesn't have pit. So there is no pit not, this symbol stands for not. There is no pit at cell one one. There is no vumpus at cell one one. You remember that this is the thing which I mentioned here, knowledge base. So these are written symbolically. Agent doesn't perceive bridge at cell one one. The agent doesn't, doesn't perceive stench at cell one one. The agent does not perceive uh, glitter at cell one one. So these are the information. And we, we have already uh, mentioned that at this point of time, agent doesn't have information about other cells. So this is partially observable. Now comes the part of reasoning scheme. Now these are the only information agent has about, uh, about the environment at time point T0 when it starts. But now it doesn't have other information about other state, how it will take action. It needs to derive new information for that, based on this information in the knowledge base and some reasoning scheme, it will derive new information. And as I said, we are basing on the propositional logic. So these are some uh, typical rules we follow in propositional logic uh, environment. What are the rules like? These are, uh, I, uh, I think, uh, whoever from mathematical background or computer science, even logic philosophy, well, of these are the kind of uh, uh, rules which we also follow in mathematical reasoning. What are these rules? The first rule says, if two sentences, alpha and beta, are equivalent, that means if we assume alpha, then we can derive beta. And if we assume beta, then we can derive alpha. So this is a rule. If whenever we have alpha by implication beta, we can write the line below the horizontal, uh, sorry, sentence below the horizontal line. Then um, conjunction elimination, this is another rule of propositional logic. It says, if we know two sentences, alpha and, uh, if we know a sentence alpha and beta, then any of the component can be derived from there. Then the next is mode exponents, very forward chaining. Also, it is known in some literature. We do such kind of reasoning often in mathematics. If we know that we have a, sentence alpha, and we also know that if alpha, then beta, then immediately we can derive beta from there. So this is called mode exponents. Then contraposition, it says, if we know, assuming alpha, we will get beta, then contraposition says that assuming not beta, we will get not alpha. This is also we follow often in mathematical reasoning. Whenever we are, suppose if we are asked to prove if alpha, then beta, Often what we do, we consider suppose not beta, and then we derive a conclusion that not alpha, and that way we prove the result, uh, required, con uh, required uh, task. So that is called contraposition. Then De Morgan law, this is also um, whoever has done set theory must be aware of De Morgan law. De Morgan law also is true, also um, uh, true in this context. 
Uh, if you have negation outside, inside alpha or beta, then this distributes. This negation distributes over this junction and it will be, it will be conjunction of two neg negated statements. Similarly, for the other context. And then here we call resolution rule. Um, it says that if we know alpha or beta, and as well as we know it is not alpha, then it is immediate because it should be beta. Because alpha or beta we have in the premise, as well as we have in the premise that it is not alpha, then from there using resolution principle, we say it is beta. So these are some typical rules we follow uh, uh, when we do reasoning in mathematics. So I will not go into the detail of propositional logic. So let us come back to the example which we are considering. So see how here agent has this information, but agent doesn't know that whether agent can move from here, whether agent has only possibility to move to this square or move to this square, but it doesn't know whether these two squares are safe to move because it doesn't have any information about these two squares. So now agent is going to derive information for these two squares using this knowledge base and reasoning. So see, first, agent consider this, this one. Look at this R2, which is a by implication statement, B11, if and only P12 or P21. Using this first rule, I can split it into two uh, conjuncts. So this is what is written here, B11 implies P21 or P12 and P21 or P12 implies B11. Then we can use this conjunction elimination rule and take one of the components because it has two conjunctions, uh, two components conjoined by this symbol and then we can take any of them by applying conjunction elimination and we took this component from this state. After this, here I can apply contraposition, this rule, contraposition. So we just have this statement using contraposition. I have negation of B11 implies negation of this part. Now, why I took this? Because I already have negation B11 in the knowledge base. You see, we have negation B11 in the knowledge base. So we took along with this negation B11. Now this step four and step three, on this we can apply mode exponents. See, this is like alpha. This is alpha implies beta. Mode exponents here. So applying mode exponent, uh, mode exponents on step four and three, we can derive this part. Then when we have this part, we can apply De Morgan. Applying De Morgan, we will have negation P21 and negation P12. And again, applying conjunction elimination, we can derive separately both of these components separately. So for now, I, wrote, I write negation P12. That means agent now deriving information from the knowledge base using knowledge base and this reasoning scheme, agent derives a new information that there is no peak at cell 1, 2. This agent, agent didn't know this earlier. Agent also can similarly can derive not P21, applying this conjunction elimination. So agent now know derive a new, by deriving a new information using the logical reasoning that there is no peak in this square and in this square, so agent can move. So thus that information agent derive using this logical reasoning. Uh, once again, uh, can you, uh, can someone remind me how much time I have? Yes. Uh, till 60, because I am, I am in different time zone. I cannot um, see this. Oh, it's, oh, so we have, I have only 10 minutes, right? Okay. Oh, or I don't have this 10 minutes. I don't know. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. So please uh, uh, give me an indication because I'm not uh, keeping track of the time. Uh, okay, it will be better. 
So now you can see that at uh, next point of time, agent learns new information that uh, PIT one, uh, sorry, cell one two and cell two one is free from PIT. So agent can move. Now agent has two choices. You see, either agent can move here or agent can move here because none of them has uh, PIT. So here, I, this is like a non-deterministic situation. Agent has more than one choice. It's not a single choice. So this is also non-deterministic thing which we discussed before. So now suppose agent can move any of these squares. So agent chooses, uh, agent chooses to move to the square two one, uh, two one. So agent moves to the square two one instead of one two. Suppose first. So when agent moves to the square two one, that means agent was here after deriving information about these two squares that they do not contain p. Agent moves to the square two. Now, after agent moves to the square two, two one, agent can sense a bridge because here we have bridge. So this new information percept agent agent percept that should be now added again. So now this point of time, the next point of time, this when agent moves to square two one, agent have a new percept and that is agent perceives bridge at square two one. Then again, with respect to this information, we have rule in the knowledge base. This rule, B21, if and only P11 or P22 or P31. This is if and only statement. So we can break into two parts using this and using conjunction elimination, we can take any of them. So here, for this one, it then took this part, B21 implies P11 or P22 or P31 using conjunction elimination. Now you can see from step one and step two, again, one can apply mode exponents. This is like alpha, this is like if alpha, then beta. If we apply mode exponents, then we will get this part. So we have P11 or P22 or P31. Now here, for this part, agent already knows at the previous point of time, agent has this information, not P11, not P11. So not P11 along with P11 or P22 or P31, it's a form of resolution. You see here, resolution, which says if you have some disjunctive statement here and one of the disjunct is negative, then rest of the disjunct come, comes as a conclusion. So here you have the same form. Yeah, you have disjunctive statement. One of the disjunct is negated, so rest of the disjunct comes in. So now agent, at this point of time, agent derives another new information. What agent derives? After agent comes to the square two one, agent learns that one of the square two two or three one must have must have peaked, but it doesn't know which one or it doesn't know if both of them. It only knows one of the square must have peaked. But now agent cannot move to this square, cannot move to this square because it has it can have peak and agent uh, will be uh, dropped to the peak. That is not desired. So agent now moves to the cell one one again and chooses the chooses the earlier action. This is the earlier action because agent, when it was here, agent knew either this cell or this cell can move. So agent first moves to the square, learns that both uh, either of them can have P, moves back, and then it moves to the square one, two. So it moves to the square one, two. And when it comes to the square one, two, it again has new information, new percent. Because in the square one, two, if you see the picture, it has change, but no bridge. So this new percept agent learns after coming to square one two and it, it, it is, uh, this new percept is added to the agent knowledge base. So, it, uh, so knowledge base, it is uh, now added, not B12. That means there is no bridge at cell one two. Again, in the similar way, we choose the uh, one part of the by implication statement related to B12, bridge at square one two. We choose that this part, and then using contraposition on two, we get 
step three. Then once step one and step three, we can apply modus exponents. Applying modus exponents on step one and in step three, we get this part, which is here. And then on this, we can apply De Morgan because negation outside and inside we have this junction. So we get this one. And now with step five, as already, uh, yes. So one second. Yeah, so with step five, we have three conjunct. We can take any of them using conjunction elimination. So we took here not P22 from these three con conjunct conjuncts, not P22. And with not P22, already we have in earlier step P22 or P31. And here we have not P22. So again, these two are resolution. Disjunctive statement, one of the disjunct is negated, so rest other disjunct will come as a conclusion. So we get conclusion that there is a pit at square three one. So you can see using this step by step information about the parts uh, uh, of the environment and the reasoning scheme and laws of the environment which agent has it in its knowledge base. It derives new information and then takes action. How then this whole agent program works? Suppose it works like this three function, as I said before. Agent first asks before taking an action, being at cell one one, agent first asks the knowledge base if there is no pit at cell two one. When agent asks it, if this information is already available in the knowledge base, tell will produce this answer. If it is not, it will use the reasoning scheme like used here to derive this information. Using the reasoning scheme, it derives the information that there is no pit in cell 21. So it derives this information using this and then tell function produce this answer to the agent program. Agent program is already defined based on the percept where, we, uh, sorry, based on the uh, agent function, where the agent function is defined like this way if there is no pit at cell xy and agent is either of this cell, that means surrounding cell of cell xy, that means it can be x, x minus one y cell, x y minus one cell, x plus one y cell, or x y plus one cell, because x y cell had uh, no pit. And if agent is any of this cell, then agent can move to cell one, x1. So now when it gets the information to one cell is safe, is no pit, then based on this agent program, agent can move to cell 2 1. So this is the way the function is designed. Now, yes, please. Yeah, so I am going to conclude. So here, just I will maybe I will take a um, because I could not I uh, present a logical agent, but there was a learning part which I could not present. But maybe from this example, I can show one learning, uh, uh, how the agent is learning also. Now, I will just quickly show this. Uh, after this, how it logically derives information and then takes action that is presented. Let me also show that how it learns new thing also. So you see, in this example, yeah. So again, started from this cell 1-1. One, one, then it derives information about these two cells that none of these have pit. Then agent moves to this cell to one. And then coming here, agent learns that either this cell or this cell can have pit, but agent doesn't know that which one exactly has pit. So agent then moves back because it cannot move, moves back to cell one one. Then it chose, it, it uh, uh, chose, uh, the agent chose the another function, I'm sorry, another action which it can take. It moves to the cell 1, 2. And then coming to cell 1, 2, agent learns that this square is free from pit and this square has pit. So what happened in the first round when agent, if we learn the program, agent first runs this way, moves this way, then back, come back, and then moves this way, and then learns that there is pit. This way, because of some movement, agent loses some point because each action, for each action, there is a minus one penalty. So after the game ends, 
there will be a performance measure based on whatever agent action agent has taken in the whole game there will be a performance measure but then agent learns that in this first uh, uh, case agent moves two times from here then comes back then takes this action in the second round if we run the same program because of this learning element which learns from the feedback agent will not take in the second time if we run the same program agent will not run this way first agent will start running from this way first because it was unnecessary movement so agent will remove this movement in the next round when we run the same program so that is the learning component which i mentioned uh, at the beginning that agent learns from the feedback and then uh, modifies its action function so this is what uh, this much i will say and i will stop here because i do not have time and thank you very much for listening and now uh, you can ask me questions if anything is there thank you very much I see someone has asked what is the um, uh, most used program languages. Uh, so I am not really a programmer, but I know that uh, where I teach, students are sometimes using C, C sharp, Python, Java to do such things. Mm -hmm. I, uh, so this is, uh, I cannot uh, say examples uh, definitely now, but of course, because computer vision, uh, you need for like, um, like there are problems, right? Starting from face recognition, pattern recognition, many things are used. So um, uh, those uh, disciplines will come. In. Chatbot, chatbot is like uh, if you sometime if you you can chat a bit. You can search online. Just you will understand better than my explanation. So chatbot is like in, uh, if you uh, write chatbot on Google, it will give you some link where it's like a conversation between two people, not people, two agent you can consider. So you are the human agent. On the other side, there will be some software agent answering. If you write something, it will answer you something relevant. I, usually, they take the clues from your what you write, and they frame some question based on that. But if you go on for some uh, for some longer point of uh, longer time, this conversation, uh, you will find that this chatter about the other uh, programming agent sitting on the other side, which is answering or chatting with you, uh, is becoming quite mechanical in answering. So this is something uh, you, yeah. I see. What are the social and economical challenges in? I cannot read everything. Oh, this is quite a big question. So I was presenting just uh, <laughs> the basics of artificial intelligence uh, from the perspective of building it. Social challenges, I cannot say like there can be good, bad, everything. If you use something, um, social challenges, like I would say nowadays, um, as I put some examples at the beginning, uh, there's examples of different kinds of uh, achievements of artificial intelligence, like uh, developing, uh, like uh, developing nowadays, there are something like online tutoring online uh, game playing so uh, if you consider environment like this where we all are sitting at home and doing everything online such applications will be helpful so so, so you can think of so from social perspectives uh, so everything starting from using smart mobile to uh, do, doing anything is related to this social aspect yeah, I 
Oh, this is, uh, I don't think that at all the, uh, at all the target of AI also. It's not, it's, it's understandable that human intelligence cannot be replaced from all possible perspective by robotic uh, intelligence. But maybe some perspective, like there are some, I, I didn't have chance to present it. Uh, there are some, uh, there are some comparisons, like uh, how much memory we need to represent something and in that perspective it is it is uh, observed that human have more like uh, representative power expressive power than uh, machine but if we consider how quickly uh, human and machine can switch from one action to another then uh, uh, it's like uh, the machine is quite quick than human such comparisons are available so from that perspective we can think of that Maybe some actions can be um, do better, like we know that computation, some computations, but some there are different many aspects which machine may not, uh, machine cannot um, overpower human. This is, is very concrete question. I am not expert on AI really, sorry for that. I cannot give you a concrete answer. I was, my planning was to just present, I, I am more theoretical person. My planning was present to present here that how different disciplines, uh, starting from mathematics, computer science, cognitive science, um, uh, philosophy, psychology, all, all are, uh, working together to develop intelligent agent, but um, your question is quite uh, specific in the sense. Uh, can you just repeat once again this uh, area he mentioned, he or she mentioned? Uh, so I, I know that uh, there are there are system. This is for sure, but I cannot really answer. It's not can. It is already doing such things. I am sure about that. Yes, uh, there, there is one question from Ramesh Manna. What is the difference between AI versus machine learning? Oh, what so machine learning, is, AI yeah. machine, learning? Uh, machine learning is only one component of AI, I would say, because at, as I mentioned at the beginning, AI uh, encompasses all these disciplines, like starting from how do you represent knowledge, linguistic comes in, uh, reasoning schemes comes in, so logic comes in, deductive, inductive, then comes in cognitive science, then comes in psychology of reasoning, then comes in, uh, 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 then comes in uh, this uh, philosophy of reasoning or rationality, everything. So all this discipline, machine learning is one aspect. Machine learning is a uh, subfield of AI, I would say, can be considered as. Sure, I can send uh, send you by by mail, but uh, just let me know because I could not present all the parts of the slides. Should I send all which is prepared but not presented? Okay, I will I will, uh, I will send it to you so you can share. Is it fine? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Minister. Good evening, everybody. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this webinar. On this auspicious occasion, on behalf of all the faculty members of Bidhan Chandra College, Disha, I would like to express my gratitude to the Vice Principal Sir of Bidhan Chandra College, Disha, Dr. Ramesh Kaur, Governing Body President Sir, Dr. Sudip Saroy, IQAC Coordinator, Professor Sadhunath Kundu, and Barsar Sir, Dr. Subhujit Ghosh, for providing encouragement and inspiration to organize this webinar. I also wish to express our sincere thanks to Dr. Somat Aftabadam for giving a nice presentation on the topic Artificial Intelligence, Representation, Reasoning, Learning. I also extend my thanks to my motivated and dedicated colleagues of our college for their enormous inspiration regarding this webinar. I also extend my thanks to all the audience and participants for their active cooperation for the successful completion of this webinar. I would also like to thank Dr. Abdul Khalid for his technical support. Thanks, uh, my, my special thanks to Professor Unmesh Mondal. He is the coordinator of this webinar. The last but not the least, I want to thank uh, Dr. Samun sir and Dr. Gopal Mondal sir who made the contact with Madam. Thank you, sir. And thank you all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unmesh Babu, I am going to YouTube link. Take a bundle. Take a bundle. 